Pupils Book, page 40, Activity 7. Listen and read. What are the raffle winners going to get? Let's talk about how we're going to raise money for our class trip. Any ideas? I've got an idea. We could all make something to sell. Like what? Well, we all like art. I like painting. You're good at sculpture. And Susie likes taking photos. So, we could have an art exhibition here at the school. Yes! Wait a minute. Are people really going to buy our things? I'm not so sure. Well, we could sell tickets to the exhibition. You know, raffle tickets. Oh, I see. We sell raffle tickets and we pick the winners at the exhibition. The winners take home the art. That sounds like a good idea. Let's tell the class. Pupils Book, page 40, Activity 9. Listen and answer the questions. 1. Wow, something smells good. Thanks. We're baking biscuits. Can I have one? No, <laughs> but you could help bake them. I don't really know how to bake. It's easy. I'll show you. 2. How's the car wash going? So-so. Not a lot of people are stopping. Hmm. Maybe people driving by can't see you very well. Yes, that's the problem. But it's about to get better. Robert and Tony are making signs for us. They're going to hold up the signs by the street. That way, people will know we're here. What a good idea! Three. Did you see our music club's new website? I did. It looks fantastic. I'm glad you like it. But it's about to get better. Really? How? Freddy made a video of last night's concert. He's going to show me how to upload it onto the website. That's a really good idea. Four. What are you doing? You mean, what were we doing? We finished making posters for the school play next weekend. Oh, sorry I wasn't here to help you. You can still help, if you want to. OK, what can I do? You could help us put them up around the school. Sounds good to me. Activity book, page 35. Activity 7. Listen, then circle the correct answers. That car looks great. What's going on? Oh, thanks. We're doing this car wash to raise money for our science club. We're going to buy materials for our science projects. It's a pity you haven't got many people or cars. Yes, I suppose a lot of people don't realise we're doing this here. I've got an idea. Tim and I could make signs and hold them up over there so that more people will stop. What a great idea! We didn't think of that. Pupils Book, page 42. Activity 13. Listen and read. What makes a brilliant ad? Creating an effective advertisement. What makes an advertisement effective? You can easily answer this question if you walk around a city. There are thousands of advertisements, but which ones catch your eye? A good ad, short for advertisement, is one that gets your attention. If it makes you focus on the important information too, it does its job very well. Lastly, if you still remember the message after you move on, then it's a brilliant ad. To learn how to create an effective ad, like a poster for example, start by comparing the two posters on the right. Answer this without stopping to think. Which one is more effective? Yes, it's the one at the bottom. 
Let's examine why. First of all, it's more colourful and it's got attractive pictures. The white and black poster almost becomes invisible next to it. Colour draws attention. Moreover, it can affect your mood and make you react in a certain way. The colour red excites you and makes you feel bold and adventurous. The colour blue makes you believe that what you're reading is true. Images do the same. Do the cupcakes on the poster at the bottom of the page make your mouth water? Do they make you scan the text to find out where you can get them? That's what they're there for. An ad isn't just colour and pictures. You've got something to say. So the next thing you should do is decide how much text you should write. Remember that people are impatient and will rarely read a long text to see what it's about. The amount of text should be just right to get your message across. So focus on your message and say it with as few words as possible. Your choice of font, the style of letters, font size, how big or small the letters are, and font colour also play an important role. You want the text to be easy to read, especially from a distance. Finally, you have to decide how you're going to organise both the pictures and the text in the space you've got. A good layout helps people read the ad quickly and communicates your message more effectively. If your poster is too busy, your message will simply get lost. Activity book page 38. Activity 16. Listen and read. What does a successful advert need to have? Advertisements tell people about a product and make people want to buy it. Think of an advert that you think is effective. What makes it good? Is it the picture or is it the text? Perhaps you like the way the images and font look or how the information is organised. A successful advert has got an interesting design, images and fonts. These things add to the impact of the advert. If the layout is good, the message is more effective. And if the message is very effective, then it's a brilliant advert. Pupils book, page 44. Activity 17. Look, listen and read. Has George ever been fishing? I'm going fishing with my dad this weekend. That sounds fun. Honestly, have you ever been fishing? No, I haven't. Why? I've spent endless hours sitting in a boat and believe me, it's the most boring thing in the world. I think I'd like it. Anyway, I'm going rock climbing with my cousins. I've never done it before, but I'm sure I won't enjoy it. I hate heights. I've never been rock climbing either, but I'd love to. Hey, why don't we swap? You go fishing with my dad, and I'll go rock climbing with your cousins. It's a deal. Pupils book, pages 46 and 47. Activity 23. Listen and read. Match the titles A to C to the paragraphs 1 to 3. Doing what you can. Not all the people in the world have the good fortune to have good health, a roof over their head, or enough food to eat. Also, many animals are left in the streets hungry, cold and helpless because their owners don't want to look after them anymore. Both people and animals need a helping hand, and charity groups are there to offer it. There are many different charity organisations all over the world that help people and animals in need, and they rely on the work of volunteers to raise money for their cause. 
Many young people raise money for charity. Read about what these young people from around the world are doing. 1. Dublin, Ireland Libby Mulligan loves to play the guitar and sing, and people love to listen to her. When she was 12 years old, she decided that she could play her guitar and sing at parties and weddings for money. Libby may not be a professional musician, but she earns enough money to donate to a children's cancer charity in her community. 2. Paris, France Charles Lyon is a young artist who sells his art online to raise money for animal rescue. It all started when Charles wrote a letter to a local animal shelter, asking what he could do to help stray cats and dogs in his neighbourhood. Then he came up with his website idea. Charles draws and sells pictures of animals on it. So far, he has sold more than 200 illustrations. He donates the money to local animal shelters and organisations that help find stray animals a new home. 3. Cape Town, South Africa Tandy Jacobs and Stefan Berg wanted to help homeless children in their city. They decided to raise money by offering tutoring services. They used the money they earned to buy blankets, food and other supplies. More than a thousand others have joined them, benefiting homeless children in other places around the country. The work these young people do has made a difference to the lives of people around them. They are the proof that if we all do a little, we can achieve great things. Activity book, page 42. Activity 26. Read and complete, then listen and check. Companies that help people. All over the world, there are many people that benefit from the work of organisations and charities. You can help people in need too, either by donating money to a good cause or by working as a volunteer. You can also help raise money for a charity or organisation. Here are two companies that help people. Perhaps you might want to donate some money to one of them. Child's Play Being ill is no fun. Being ill in hospital is terrible. You're alone and you're scared. Your parents aren't there all the time. You haven't got your computer, your video games, or any other games. People who worked at video game companies knew this and decided to help children in hospitals. They started a charity called Child's Play. Child's Play gives laptops, video games, and video game consoles to hospitals. They also give toys and books. Ill children can enjoy them and feel better. Anyone can give money to Child's Play. It's a wonderful way to help children who are in hospital. Kiva Kiva is a company that does what it can to help people. Kiva helps people start their own companies. For example, Juicy is good at baking. She wants to start her own business and sell her delicious biscuits and cakes. But it's expensive to start your own business and Josie hasn't got a lot of money. Kiva can help. Kiva finds people that will lend Josie money to start her company. When her business becomes successful, she'll give the money back to the people that helped her. People can donate any amount of money to Kiva, even really small amounts. It's a great way to help others. Pupils Book, page 50. Activity 31. Listen, read and repeat. 1. Ulk. K. 2. 
mb m Pupils book page 50 activity 32 listen and blend the sounds 1 walk walk 2 O M comb three O A M lamb four T O K talk five U I M climb six ch or k chalk Pupils book page fifty activity thirty three Listen and chant a lamb can walk, but a lamb can't talk. A lamb is the colour of white chalk. Checkpoint. Units 1 to 3. Pupils book, page 53. Activity 2. Get ready. A. Complete the dialogue with the correct form of the verbs. Then listen and check. Everyone, I've got news. Do you remember Mr Finnegan? Yes, he was our music teacher. He was one of the best teachers we ever had. Yes, I used to have violin lessons with him when I was six. Well, Mr Finnegan is going to retire at the end of this school year. The head teacher wants us to think of something we can do for him. Any ideas? I've got one. Everyone could write a poem about Mr Finnegan. How about putting them all together in a book? I don't know. I like reading poems, but I'm not good at writing them. I like writing poems, but I've got another idea. I think we should take a lot of photos around the school and we should put them on a big poster. Good idea. We could write funny notes next to the photos. Mr Finnegan would like that. Units 1 to 3. Exam preparation. Pupils book, page 56. Listening, part A. What did each person do at the weekend? Listen and write a letter in each box. There is one example. Hello, Judy. I hope you had a good weekend. Did you do anything nice? I had a really fun weekend. We need some new paints for the art club. So on Friday evening, Mum and I made lots of cakes. And then on Saturday, I had a cake sale to raise money for them. I sold all of the cakes. There were 20 of them. Can you see the letter D? Now you listen and write a letter in each box. And how about your little sister? Did she help you sell the cakes? Sarah? No, she was too busy at the weekend. She's in the school basketball team and they had an important game at another school on Saturday, so she couldn't help me. She left home at 7 o'clock in the morning to go to the game, and she came home after 6.30 in the evening. She was really tired. And what about your younger brother? Did he play football? Paul's in the football team. He's one of the best at school. But he didn't play at the weekend because he was staying with his friend Philip all weekend. Philip's family opened a restaurant on Saturday and Paul was helping them. It's a pizza restaurant and it's in the town centre. I can't wait to go there. 
Oh, I love pizza. And did your older brother go to the restaurant with Paul? No. Ben, that's my big brother. He usually does taekwondo at weekends. He started going to classes in September because some of his friends go too. But his teacher was ill on Saturday, so he stayed home and played chess with Dad all day. Dad taught Ben to play last summer. Ben always loses, but he plays better than before, and he enjoys playing. And did you see your cousins at the weekend? Yes, Adam and Tony. I saw them on Sunday. They came round to my house with my aunt Helen. Adam had a really good weekend. He's in the school orchestra, and before the concert on Saturday evening, he sold more than fifty tickets to family and friends. He raised lots of money for the school. That's great. And is his brother Tony in the orchestra too? Yes, he is. He didn't have time to sell any tickets because he had to practice all day on Saturday. He played the trumpet at the concert. He plays really well. Look, I've got some photos of Tony playing on Saturday night on my mobile phone. Can you see him? He's standing at the back. Now listen again. Unit four, shopping around. Pupils' book, page fifty-eight. Activity one. Read. Guess the answer to each question. Then listen and check. One. What's an oniomaniac? A. Someone who shops too much. B. Someone who is afraid of shopping. C. Someone who eats too many onions. The answer is A. An oniomaniac is a person who shops too much. Two. People in Banjarmasin in Indonesia get up early to buy their food. The market is open from five o'clock to nine o'clock in the morning. The market sells fresh fruit, vegetables, fish, cakes, and many other things. Why is this market more interesting than others? A. There are no shops. B. The sellers are all in boats. C. Both A and B. The answer is C. There are no shops, and the sellers are all in boats. Three. The Dubai Mall in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, is the largest shopping center in the world, and has got the world's biggest sweet shop. It's also one of the most popular shopping centers in the world. How many people visited this shopping center in 2011? A, 12 million. B, 54 million. C. Ninety-seven million. The answer is B. In 2011, fifty-four million people visited the Dubai Mall. Pupils' book, page fifty-nine, activity two. Michelle and Dylan are talking about buying presents. What do they decide to buy? Listen and choose. I want to get some jewelry for my mum for Mother's Day, so I'm going to the shopping centre. First, I'm going to go to the jewelry shop. Hmm, I like this turquoise necklace, but it's very expensive. Everything here is expensive. I'm getting out of here. Let me try the new department store. Hmm, look at this. It's a pretty beaded bracelet, but it's more expensive than the turquoise necklace. You know what? I give up. I'm going to go and look in my favourite clothes shop. Wait a minute. 
Look at this pair of silver earrings. They're less expensive than the bracelet and they're beautiful. I'm getting them. My mum likes simple things. So for Mother's Day, I'm going to give her a card. No, I won't buy it from a card shop. I'm going to make it myself and write my own message. My mum will probably cry when she reads it. But what can go with a card? A bunch of balloons that say Happy Mother's Day on them? No, too childish. A bouquet of roses from the outdoor market? Nice. But roses are expensive and they never last as long as we want them to. Wait, I just remembered something. There's a craft fair in the park and one of the artists has lovely picture frames. I could frame a picture of my mum and me. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be the best Mother's Day present ever. Pupils Book, page 59. Activity 3. Listen again and take notes. Then choose the correct answers. I want to get some jewellery for my mum for Mother's Day. So I'm going to the shopping centre. First, I'm going to go to the jewellery shop. Hmm. I like this turquoise necklace, but it's very expensive. Everything here is expensive. I'm getting out of here. Let me try the new department store. Hmm. Look at this. It's a pretty beaded bracelet. But it's more expensive than the turquoise necklace. You know what? I give up. I'm going to go and look in my favourite clothes shop. Wait a minute. Look at this pair of silver earrings. They're less expensive than the bracelet and they're beautiful. I'm getting them. My mum likes simple things. So for Mother's Day, I'm going to give her a card. No, I won't buy it from a card shop. I'm going to make it myself and write my own message. My mum will probably cry when she reads it. But what can go with a card? A bunch of balloons that say Happy Mother's Day on them? No, too childish. A bouquet of roses from the outdoor market? Nice. But roses are expensive and they never last as long as we want them to. Wait, I just remembered something. There's a craft fair in the park and one of the artists has lovely picture frames. I could frame a picture of my mum and me. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be the best Mother's Day present ever. Activity book, page 49. Activity 4. Listen and number the pictures. Number one. Thank you for this beautiful turquoise necklace. Number two. And I just love these silver earrings. Number three. These balloons are great. Number four. How lovely. Where did you find this amazing beaded bracelet? Number five. These roses are so pretty. Thank you. Number six. Thank you for the picture frame. It's perfect. Pupils book, page 60. Activity 5. Listen and read. What's wrong with the earphones? Reviews by kids. The website by and for kids. Click on any category. Read a review or write a review. It's up to you. Ear Pals, £10.99. Average rating, 2 stars. Reviews, 1 star. Never again. By Tamsin, Norwich. My mum gave me a gift voucher for an online shop. I decided to use it to buy a pair of these headphones. 
They're called ear pals. I don't like them. The cords are too long, and there's no case like the one they showed online. They aren't as good as they looked, that's for sure. Plus, the ear pals keep falling out of my ears. Maybe my ears are the wrong shape, or maybe the wrong size. I don't know. These earphones are definitely not my pals. Read more reviews. Camera phones, twenty pounds ninety-five. Average rating, four stars. Reviews, five stars. Fantastic, by Music Freak, Sheffield. Good sound and great design. The camouflage design helps you hide when you're on a secret mission. They're a little expensive, it's true, but to me, they're worth the money. I used to buy less expensive headphones, but they never lasted very long. Well, I learnt my lesson. Camo phones are the best. Read more reviews. Big sound wraparounds, five pounds ninety nine. Average rating three stars. Reviews three stars. Good for the price, by Danny. Okay, maybe these aren't the best headphones in the world. They're definitely not as good as my old ones, but at least they work, and they're the least expensive ones I know. The sound is just okay, not good, not bad, but they're really cheap. Read more reviews. Activity book page fifty, activity six. Listen and read, then tick the correct person. Kids rule. Kids telling it like it is. Click on any category. Come on, kids, write a review. The RC Super Speedo Racer, fifty-five pounds, average rating three stars, by Cowgirl, Sydney, Australia, four stars. I love this car. It's powerful and runs really well on the wooden floors in my room. It crashes into walls and bounces right off. It's quite expensive, but a lot of fun. It's as exciting as the most expensive remote control cars. Actually, I think it's even more fun. By Tomcat, Canterbury, England, two stars. Not great. Not as much fun as the Cool Cat car. The Cool Cat car runs very fast on concrete floors, and even on carpets. The RC Super Speedo Racer hasn't got a lot of power. It can't even race on carpets. The RC Super Speedo Racer is less expensive, but for a few pounds more, you can get the cool cat car and have a lot more fun. Pupils' book, page sixty-two, activity seven. Listen and read. Which game shop has got the cheapest prices? What are you going to buy with your gift voucher? A new game called Tunnel Island. I played it at Zach's house. It's really fun. Great. So where are you going to buy it? That's what I'm trying to work out. I'm looking at prices online. Good idea. Try looking at Game Time. No. Wait. Look at Chester's. They're usually less expensive than Game Time. Let me see. Yes, you can find it at Chester's, and it's only twenty-five pounds. I'm going to ask my mum to drive me there. Want to come? Okay. Pupils' book, page sixty-two, activity nine. Listen and find. Then choose a phrase from the box. One. What are you going to buy with your birthday money? I'm thinking about buying a new MP3 player. Great. Which one are you going to get? I'm not sure yet. I really like this one. Really? Why? 
My friend Robbie has got it. He says it's really good. But it's really expensive. It's the most expensive one in this shop. I know. Far too expensive. I haven't got that much money. 2. Hey, how about this one? I saw it on TV. It looks really good. How much memory does it have? Uh, it has 8 gigabytes. That's not too bad. Not as good as 16 gigabytes. How much is it? It's less expensive than the other one. It's 75 euros. I can't afford that either. Maybe we should go to that outlet shop. There's supposed to be a big sale going on. 3. This one looks nice. Oh yes. I saw this one in a magazine the other day. Look at the design. It's really nice. And look, it comes with an extra battery for free. That's great. How much is it? 70. It's a little less expensive than the last one. 70 euros? That's still too expensive for me. 4. How about this one? It got some really good reviews online. Look. Let me see. Yes, the design is nice. Do you see the price anywhere? It's the least expensive one in this shop. But it's 40 euros. I haven't got that much money. Look, it's on sale. It's only 30 euros. It has 4 gigabytes of memory and it comes with a free case. Perfect. I'll take it. Oh dear, it's already sold out. Oh no. Activity book page 51. Activity 8. Listen, then answer the questions. How about this one? It's got some really great reviews. Look. Oh yes. Is it as nice as yours? Definitely. It's a really good player. And it's the least expensive one in the shop. Yeah, but it's 85 euros. I haven't got that much money. Yes, but look, it's on sale. Let's see, it's only 60 euros. It's got four gigabytes of memory and it comes with a free case. Wow, I really like the design too. It's perfect. There's only one problem. What? It's already sold out. You're joking. Pupils book page 64, activity 14. Listen and read. When were the first coins used? Money, money, money. Most people today use coins, paper money or credit cards to buy things. However, shopping wasn't always as easy as that. About 10,000 years ago, people farmed and grew the food they needed. They raised livestock, like cows and goats, and grew grain, like rice and wheat. During that time, people used bartering. This means they exchanged goods between them. They mostly used livestock and grain instead of money in many different parts of the world. It must have been quite tricky to decide the price of things. If we still used bartering, how many goats or sacks of grain would you have to give for a video game? Over the years, things changed, and about 3,000 years ago, people started to use other things as money. Shells from the sea, for example, such as the cowrie shell, were traded as money in places like China, Thailand, India and some countries in Africa. It wasn't until about 2,000 years ago when the first coins appeared. China, Greece and India were probably the first places to use metal coins. Most coins were made of expensive metals like bronze, silver or gold. They were made by heating small amounts of metal and then putting a seal on them, grease, 
or putting a hole in the middle, India and China. But carrying around a lot of heavy coins wasn't very practical. That's probably why paper money started to be used in China almost 1,000 years ago. In Europe, paper money began as bank notes. The first bank notes were made in Sweden in 1661. Almost every country has got its own currency, a specific kind of money. For example, the USA has got American dollars and the United Kingdom has got British pounds. We can tell how much one unit of a certain currency is worth in another currency. This is a very useful thing when you want to travel abroad. As you see, what we use for money has changed quite a few times up to now, and it's very likely to change in the future too. Activity book, page 54. Activity 16. Listen and read. Who used the first paper money? The idea for paper money. Long ago, people didn't use bank cards, paper money or coins to buy things. They bartered with livestock and grain, exchanging them for the things they needed. Over time, people started using other things as money, such as cowrie shells. They exchanged the shells for food, animals and other goods. Then metal coins were made, and finally paper money. The story of paper money is a fascinating one. The use of banknotes started in the Tang Dynasty. The Tang Dynasty existed in China from AD 618 to 907. Before Chinese people used paper money, they used coins. The coins were round and had a square hole in the middle. They kept their coins on a rope, so the more coins they had on the rope, the heavier the rope would be. Rich people found that their ropes of coins were too heavy to carry around easily. So what did they do? They left their strings of coins with someone they trusted, and that person wrote down the amount of money he was keeping for them on a piece of paper and gave it to them. When the rich man wanted his money, he took the piece of paper to that trusted person and he got his coins back. This was a good idea, don't you think? Eventually, paper banknotes were created and people began to use them instead of ropes of coins. Pupils Book, page 66, Activity 18. Look, listen and read. Which bag does Belinda want? The red one or the blue one? Belinda is shopping for a bag. Hello, can I help you? Yes, please. I'm looking for a light blue bag. My mum bought it from your shop two months ago. It looked like the red and white ones in the window, only in blue, of course. Do you mean this one? Yes, that's it. That's the one. How much is it? It's €49.90. Euros 90. I'll take it. Would you like it gift-wrapped? No, thanks, but could you make it look less new? I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, you see, I borrowed my mum's bag without asking her, but I lost it. I want to replace it before she finds out. This one is exactly like it, only it looks brand new. Pupils Book, pages 68 and 69. Activity 24. Listen and read. Match the titles A to C to the paragraphs 1 to 3. Shop till you drop. For those who enjoy shopping, every country can offer a different shopping experience. Let's find out about some of the world's most exciting shopping adventures. The Chatuchak Weekend Market in Bangkok, Thailand, 
is one of the biggest markets in the world and one of the most famous. The market is huge. It covers more than 35 acres in all. It's got more than 15,000 vendors and about 200,000 people or more visit it every weekend. Here, you can find everything your heart desires, from a designer pair of jeans to books, coffee makers or a sweet little puppy. Because Chattuchak is such a big market and it's got so much variety, you're most probably going to spend quite a lot of time there. To make your visit as enjoyable as possible, don't forget to wear comfortable shoes and clothes. Pack a bottle of water and bring enough cash with you, as most vendors don't take credit cards. And don't be too shy to haggle. Everyone does. In Tokyo, Japan, one of the most popular places for young people is called Akihabara. Akihabara isn't a shop. It's a whole neighborhood that's known as Electric Town. Young people come from all over the world to buy the latest electronics, video games, animation, computers and more. If you visit and you want to buy something, make sure you ask for the international model that's got the correct features for use in your country, plus a user's manual in English. It's no fun going home to find everything's in Japanese. It's a rainy morning and you're in London. The sky is grey and you want something interesting to do. Why not head to Camden Market? Although it used to be a weekend market, you'll find lots of vendors during the week too. Fortunately, the market is largely indoors, so you can browse comfortably. With fine arts, traditional crafts, jewellery, clothes, good food and music, there's something here for everyone. Activity book, page 58. Activity 25. Listen and read. Why is bargaining a good skill in some places? Not everyone enjoys shopping, but for those that do enjoy it, there are different shopping experiences around the world. Some people like to haggle and buy things for the cheapest price. Others just like to browse and not buy anything. For some, shopping is the chance to dress up as a character when they visit their favourite shop. Read more about two very different shopping experiences in the world. How to shop in Chattuchak Market, Bangkok Chattuchak Market is a great place to bargain. Everyone bargains here. When you bargain, you try to pay a lower price for something. Here's an example. You want to buy a hat. The hat costs 20 euros. You say to the vendor, the person who sells the hat, I want to pay 10 euros. The vendor says, that's too cheap. How about 15 euros? You say, definitely not. That's still too expensive. How about 12 euros? The vendor says, OK, 12 euros. Because you bargained, you just paid 8 euros less for the hat. Bargaining is a good skill to have when you shop in some places. You can buy things for less money, and this means you can buy more things. Mandarake in Akihabara, Tokyo The most popular place in Akihabara could be Mandarake. This is the largest manga and anime shop in the world. The shop covers all eight floors of one building. It's full of DVDs of anime films, comic books and action figures of your favourite characters. The customers who shop at Akihabara are very interesting too. Some of them dress up to look like the characters in animation films, like Sailor Moon, Pokemon and Super Mario. These people wear costumes and makeup and really enjoy acting like their favourite characters. Pupil's Book, page 72. 
Activity 35. Listen, read, and repeat. 1. Sk. S. 2. H. O. O. Pupils Book, page 72. Activity 36. Listen and blend the sounds. 1. M-a-s-l Muscle 2. E-c-o Echo 3. O-n-i-s-t Honest Four. S I N S Science. Five. G O S T Ghost. Six. S E N Seen. Pupils Book, page 72. Activity 37. Listen and chant. An honest ghost made an echo in our science class. Wow, what a crazy scene. Unit 5. Holiday time. Pupils Book, page 74. Activity 1. Read and complete these fun facts about holidays. Use words from the box, then listen and check. 1. Lost and found In 2011, more people lost their mobile phones than their sunglasses while they were travelling. 2. Ouch! Every year, mosquitoes make 700 million people ill. 3. Cover up. Be careful. You can get sunburnt on a cloudy day if you don't wear sunscreen. 4. Why not fly? In 2010, a British woman took the longest kayak trip that anyone has ever taken, more than 3,200 kilometres. Pupils Book, page 75, Activity 2. Match. Then listen and check. 1. While she was hiking, a mosquito bit her. Ouch! So she put on insect repellent. 2. He learnt a good lesson. When he was biking last week, he fell and bumped his head. Now he always wears his helmet. 3. When he was skiing yesterday, the temperature dropped and it got very cold. <sighs> Now he always wears his warm ski jacket. 4. He was walking to school when it got very windy. He was lucky. He had his anorak in his backpack, so he put it on. 5. Last week their cousins were out sailing on their boat when it tipped over. They weren't wearing life jackets, but they were good swimmers. Now, everyone in the family wears a life jacket all the time. 6. She was hiking when she suddenly got very thirsty. Then she remembered her water bottle. Now she stops to drink before she gets so thirsty. 7. They were hiking when they got lost. Lucky for them, they had a map. So they found their way back to the trail. 8. 
Last year at the beach, she got badly sunburnt. It hurt. Now she always wears sunscreen. Nine. He was playing volleyball at the beach when he broke his sunglasses. He was lucky; he had another pair. Pupils' book, page seventy-six, activity five. Listen and read. Why did Jenny enjoy the weekend? The best weekend ever, by Alison Green. Jenny and her mother were getting ready for a camping trip. Mum was packing their food when Jenny walked into the kitchen. Can't we stay at home? Jenny asked. I really don't want to go camping," she said. "But camping is so much fun," said Mum. "Sleeping in a tent," said Jenny. "No TV. That's fun." "Yes, it is. We can go hiking. We can make a fire. We can cook sausages outside," said Mum. Jenny and her mother arrived at the campsite. They took everything out of the car. Jenny looked up at the sky. It's getting cloudy," said Jenny. Suddenly, they heard thunder. Kaboom! Oh no," said Mum. "Let's set up the tent." Jenny and Mum were setting up the tent when it started to rain. "Quick, get inside the tent," said Mum. Jenny waited inside the tent. In a few minutes. Mum came inside too. Her hair was wet, her clothes were wet, her shoes were wet, everything was wet. Jenny played her video game while her mother made jam sandwiches. They ate them inside the tent. It rained all night, and it rained the next day. It rained the whole weekend. Jenny and her mum sat inside. They couldn't go hiking. They couldn't make a fire. They couldn't cook any sausages outside. After two days of rain, Jenny's mother said, "Time to go home. Please help me take down the tent, Jenny," she said. Then wait in the car. Jenny waited inside the car with her video game. While Jenny's mother was packing everything into the car, it stopped raining. Then the sun came out. Now it's sunny, Mum said. She got into the car and started driving home. Mum said, "You were right, Jenny. That wasn't much fun." What? I had a great time, Mum," said Jenny. "I ate jam sandwiches all weekend." And I reached level twelve on my video game. It was the best weekend ever. Activity book, page sixty-four. Activity five. Listen and read. Then answer the questions. A family's kayaking trip. Joe felt awful when he woke up. His head hurt. His stomach hurt. His ears hurt. He was sad because his family was going kayaking soon. His mum looked at him and said, "Sorry, Joe, you're too ill to go with us. You're going to stay at home with Grandma." Joe was cross. It wasn't fair. His family said goodbye and left. Joe was staring at the TV when his grandma came in. She said. Don't worry, Joe. You'll go kayaking another day. Joe stared at the ceiling. He was thinking about his family. They were probably having a wonderful time. He closed his eyes and pictured them. They were in their kayaks on the river, laughing and having fun. There were deer and rabbits on the river banks and birds everywhere. He was sleeping when his family returned. He woke up as they came into his room. They looked miserable. His mum said, 
We had a terrible time. We all got mosquito bites. I fell and hurt my arm on the way to the river. Your sister fell into the river when she got out of her kayak. Your dad hit his head on a tree branch hanging over the river. You're very lucky that you stayed at home. Pupils Book, page 78. Activity 7. Listen and read. Why was this Daniel's best holiday ever? Hi, Uncle Daniel. It's Louise. How was your holiday? Hi, Louise. It was great. It was the best holiday ever. Oh, really? What did you do? Well, the first day I went to the beach. While I was lying on the sand, I fell asleep and woke up with terrible sunburn. Oh, no. Really? Yes. So the next day I went hiking in the forest. While I was hiking, I got dozens of mosquito bites. Oh, no. Yes. And so the next day I went horse riding. While I was riding, the horse got scared and jumped. I fell off the horse and broke my leg. Oh, that's awful. But, Uncle Daniel, I'm confused. So, why was this the best holiday ever? The doctor says I need to stay at home for a week. I can finally rest and relax. Pupils Book, page 78. Activity 9. What happened on Gina's holiday? Listen and match. Then complete the sentences. Use the correct form of the verb. 1. Gina had a terrible holiday. She went on a cruise on a ship. It was her first time on such a big boat. On the first day, Gina was reading out on the deck when the ship hit some big waves. The ship tossed up and down on the waves. Gina started to feel ill. 2. On the second day, the ship stopped near a small town. Everyone went into the town for sightseeing and shopping. Poor Gina. While she was shopping, she lost her purse. 3. After Gina got back to the ship, she was hungry. She went to the cafe on the ship and ordered lunch. But while she was eating, she found an insect in her soup. 4. Finally, Gina returned to her room on the ship and lay down on her bed. She was trying to sleep when a baby started to cry in the next room. When Gina got back home, she decided no more cruises. Activity book, page 65. Activity 7. Listen. Then circle the correct answers. So, how did your holiday go? It was terrible. On the second day, we went shopping in a small town. I was quite excited at first. One shop had lovely souvenirs. You know, T-shirts and magnets, stuff like that. I bet you got something wonderful. Well, I had my eye on a really beautiful pair of earrings. But while I was shopping, I lost my purse. By the time I found it, all the shops were closed. Oh, that's a shame. But I suppose you saved a lot of money that way. Ha ha, very funny. Pupils Book, page 80. Activity 13. Listen and read. What happened to the backpack? First day at work. You've just started a summer job in the shop at Greenfell Mountain National Park. Besides souvenirs, the shop sells items that hikers often need. Unfortunately, while you were serving your first customer, there was a power cut. You can't stop serving your customers. 
you have to do the additions and multiplications yourself and write them down in a notebook so that customers can come back for their receipts when the power is back on. Here's a short price list. Sunscreen €6.99 Disposable camera €9.99 Crisps one euro nine. Insect repellent, five euros forty nine. Map of the park, two euros fifty. Apple, seventy five cents. Sunglasses, twelve euros ninety nine. Bottle of water, one euro twenty five. Postcards. 90 cents. Hello. This is my first time hiking, and I need some suggestions for what to get. Oh, never mind. I see you've put up a list of suggestions. Perfect. Let's see. Insect repellent, sunscreen, two bottles of water, and a map. I think that's all. I needn't buy anything else. Oh, wait. I'll have an apple and a bag of crisps, too. How much is it? Hi. I'm so glad this shop is here. While we were driving here, I realised I didn't have any insect repellent. Can I get three bottles of that, please? Oh, and I forgot to bring a snack for my Year 5 pupils. So I need 15 apples, too. How much is that? Oh, hi. Listen, you won't believe what happened to me. I was out hiking this morning when I saw this beautiful flower. I tried to take a picture of it, but while I was opening my backpack, I heard an animal sound and dropped it. My backpack fell down the side of the mountain. Urgh! One disposable camera, please. I'm going to try again. Oh, and I need to buy a bottle of water. And a pair of sunglasses, too. Everything was in that bag. So, how much is it all together? Activity book, page 68. Activity 15. Read and complete with the words from the box. Then listen and check. Jim's problem. One day, Jim was lying on the beach when he realised he was sunburnt. He was also hungry and thirsty. So he went to Beach Shack. He looked at the price list to see what to buy. He picked up five items. Three bags of crisps, a bottle of water and some sunscreen. But when Jim went to pay, the girl who was serving the customers said, That's eleven euros fifty-one, please. Oh no! Jim didn't have enough money. He wasn't very good at addition and multiplication. He solved his problem by putting back two bags of crisps. How about you? How would you solve the problem? Pupils book, page 82. Activity 17. Look, listen and read. Who was Mike meeting? Sarah and Mike are having a conversation at school. Where were you going when I saw you yesterday? Hmm. What time did you see me? And which direction was I walking in? I think you were walking toward the park, and it was about six o'clock. Ah, yes. Who were you meeting? I was meeting my scouts group. But why were you wearing such a warm jacket? Well, it gets quite cold in the evenings, you know. Maybe in winter, but not in the middle of summer. Pupils book, pages 84 and 85. Activity 24. Listen and read. What did Scott Wilson do? Unique holiday destinations. Every year, millions of people around the world go on holiday. Some visit their families who live far away. 
Some go on active holidays, like hiking in national parks, and others like spending all day on the beach with a good book. Some people want to do something unusual and exciting. How about you? Would you like to try something different for your next holiday? Here are a few suggestions. Try looking at some bad art. The Museum of Bad Art, MOBA, near Boston, Massachusetts, USA, has got more than 600 pieces of the world's worst art. But is the art really that bad? Well, it's enough to say that its founder, Scott Wilson, had the idea when he found a particularly bad painting in a rubbish bin. Put on your warmest coat, we really mean it, a very warm coat, and head over to Ilulisat, Greenland. From there, you can go on an expedition into frozen lands where Arctic foxes, polar bears, and other amazing animals live. Where else would you have the chance to stay overnight in an igloo? The Anik Garden in Northumberland, UK, has got beautiful flowers and plants. But if you visit, remember it's also home to the Poison Garden. Yes, as the name suggests, it's full of poisonous plants. Pay close attention to the signs that say, Do not touch the plants. Do not even smell them. But don't be afraid. If you take the guided tour of the garden, the guides will tell you everything you need to know about these dangerous but fascinating plants. St. Martin in the Caribbean is a beautiful place to spend your holiday if you don't scare easily. Why? Its airport is close to the beach. Too close. Every year, thousands of people stand on Maho Beach and wait for planes. The planes fly right over their heads. It's the closest that you and a plane will ever get, unless you're on one. And by the way, when you're on a plane that's about to land on the island, just don't look out of the window. Activity book, page 72. Activity 25. Listen and read. Match headings A to E to paragraphs 1 to 5. Write the numbers. 1. Every year, families all over the world go on holiday. Holidays are wonderful times to be with family and explore new places and cultures. Many families like visiting other countries while on holiday and learning about the history of a particular country from guides. Other families enjoy discovering parts of their own country and learning more about their own history and culture. Sometimes families like to stay at home. They don't like to travel, but they do like to explore new places and cultures. How can they do both? These families can go on a staycation. 2. Here is how a staycation works. Your family decides on a culture and a country that they want to know more about. They do research and find out about that country's music, crafts, food, art and other things. Then they try to create the culture in their home during the holiday. 3. For example, Say that your family wants to learn more about Italian culture. Your family would do research and find out about the following things. Popular Italian food. Popular Italian music. Popular Italian stories. Italian art. Italian holidays and other events. The Italian language. 4. During the staycation, your family would plan activities to do together to learn about Italian culture. You might eat at Italian restaurants, go on a guided tour at a museum 
to learn about Italian artists and see Italian films. 5. Staycations are a great way to enjoy your family, stay at home and learn fascinating things too. Pupils Book, page 88. Activity 33. Listen, read and repeat. 1. K. O. Cl. 2. T. W. Tw. Pupils Book, page 88. Activity 34. Listen and blend the sounds. One. Cl. Ow. N. Clown. Two. Tw. I. N. Twin. Three. Tw. I. S. T. Twist. Four cl o -k, clock five tw -e twelve six cl -a -p, clap Pupils Book, page 88. Activity 35. Listen and chant. It's 12 o'clock. Time to twist. It's 12 o'clock. Time to clap. Twist, twist, twist. Clap, clap, clap. Unit 6. The Future. Pupils Book, page 90. Activity 1. Read about these inventions. Are they real or not real? Then listen and check. 1. Keyboard jeans Keyboard jeans are the latest fashion trend. These jeans come with built-in speakers, a wireless mouse and a keyboard built into the legs of the trousers. This gives new meaning to the term laptop computer. 2. Spray-on battery The battery in a mobile device can take up almost half of the space in your mobile phone, smartphone or tablet. But now there's a spray-on battery. This battery will be painted onto your mobile device, taking up no room at all. 3. Computer eyeglasses With these computer glasses, you'll be able to do everything you do on a normal computer. There's one big difference. You won't have to carry anything. The lenses are a see-through computer monitor. 4. Pet training app Tired of trying to stop your dog from barking in the house? Well, now there's an app for that. This new app for smartphones will stop your dog barking at the touch of a button. It uses special sounds that only dogs understand. You just have to make sure your dog is listening. Answers Believe it or not, the first three inventions are real. Unfortunately, no one has invented the pet training app yet.